a longer a question I'd like you all to address. My comment is, I think that Detroit could, the, the industries in Detroit might have, uh, tell us now if they wished they had been mandated lower fuel, uh, you know, higher fuel economy standards a long time ago and they wouldn't be in the corner that they're in now. So I think government can actually help business by forcing them to adhere to a standard that they can then innovate towards achieving. But that's my little comment. My other question is, I haven't heard anything today about weatherization and how, uh, since I think, I, someone can correct me, but I think 40% of our uh, carbon footprint is from the buildings that we live in and build. Um, how much of the HEC's work or any of uh, maybe representatives and, and, and legislators here can tell me what are we doing in Indiana to fund the weatherization of some of these really old homes? People are too poor to upgrade them and they're suffering so they can't pay their fuel bills. What, is, what resources are in place for that kind of work? Yeah, I defer Matt. He, and, the, and the reason is, Representative Pierce has been a real leader, and I say this is a Republican, he's a Democrat, but we're friends, a real leader in um, green buildings and energy efficiency. So I'll, I'll defer to Representative Pierce. Well, the short answer is you haven't done enough. And part of that is because there is a, a significant skepticism about how much bang you can get for the buck on this kind of conservation approach. Particularly what you tend to hear a lot of times is like, well, we have a 40-second cheapest energy cost, so if you make your building a bit more efficient, your benefits may not be as great because your, your per kilowatt hour costs are low. And I think that actually the economics are different now. That's kind of the perception um, that one has to get over. But I think this is another thing that's going to change as well, because I know that um, uh, President-elect Obama, in part of his kind of energy economic development platform, has proposals out there. We'll see if the federal government goes ahead and enacts it, and then that would be an opportunity for the um, state to be involved. Is he's talked about creating kind of a, a citizen core, particularly in, in inner cities or places where you do have a lot of these older homes that just have they just leak like cities when it comes to energy. And he would take people that are unemployed and he would have them learn the skills of how you weatherize, winterize these homes. And uh, then they would go out and they would go to low income homes that would actually improve their, their efficiency. And so that brings benefits to the low income people in the home, their energy costs will go down. It helps lower the energy demand, which then gives you environmental benefits. And you're teaching um, that person a skill. And the hope is that over time, those people who enter in the government program that trains them and has the benefit of getting those homes um, weatherized, over time, they're going to get into the private market, that there'll be entrepreneurs and people coming up, and maybe they're going to go and weatherize, um, you know, middle class, upper middle class homes were built a long time ago and weren't thinking about this stuff. And then you'll, you'll kind of jumpstart a new sector of the economy. And so I think what Indiana needs to be ready to do is if that kind of federal program comes down, oftentimes they put some federal money on the table, but you have to put a little bit of state money in to match it up and be willing to participate in the program. And so I hope we just get the position that we can do that if it comes up. 